honest with you, I've been super excited about this interview for a few weeks, knowing that it was coming. Uh, I've been tuning in to all of my favorite Family Ties reruns. Uh, you can catch them pretty much in a lot of locations, you know, and for those of you like me, we all grew up loving a show that brought us Skippy Handelman. Mark Price is the actor who played Skippy back in the day, and Mark Price joins us today because, my friends, he gives comedy like no other, and he's coming to Terre Haute this week. Mark, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Julie. Hello there. It's early here. You know, we're a few hours behind you guys, so I didn't <laughs> shave. I hope that's okay. I did read in GQ magazine that women are turned on by a man with a three-day beard. <laughs> I think it looks. So, I think it looks I, great. I, I let mine. I let mine go six days. I thought I'd double my odds. <laughs> well, I think you look fantastic. So you can grow a beard. You can be as uh, as clean shaven as you'd like. But either way, there's a lot of folks in the Wabash Valley who are now looking at their TV screens and thinking, "Oh my gosh, I remember this guy. What a funny, funny." part you got to play growing up in the 80s. If you don't mind, can we reflect just a little bit before we talk about your current act on what it was like being part of a show that literally was one of the best sitcoms around back in the day? Uh, how exciting for me. I'm just blessed that I got to be a part of that particular great show. It could have been one of any number of lesser shows, right? And I just <laughs> lucked out. I got on that one. I was 14. I was a little comedian kid. I was already performing stand-up comedy. That's how they found me for the show. And it started as one episode and then two episodes and then there were five episodes and then all of a sudden they gave me a contract. It was just super cool. Well, it's super cool that comedy is how you started. And at 14, you just mentioned you were making people laugh. And now you get to do this all the time. And in a time when I think we need laughter more than ever, Mark. Well, that's for sure. Uh, I, it's a family business. I don't know if you know that. I followed in the footsteps of my father. He's a comedian. Uh, I followed in his footsteps. I like to say we're both poor decision makers <laughs> because he could have taught me real estate. But no, <laughs> honestly, he taught me everything and gave me a great, um, you know, an edge. Not, not because he was hooked up in Hollywood and he knew all the players or anything, but because he had been around the business for so long and he taught me everything he knew. And he, he, he made some contacts for me too, really, honestly. So when people come to see your act, I mean, already I feel like we're getting a taste of who you are in just a few minutes time, but what can people expect if they come to the Zora Shrine this Thursday? Well, uh, not a refund. That's important. <laughs> just want to clarify that. But um, what's, I mentioned my dad was a comedian, and he comes from the old, old school, right? He was on the Ed Sullivan Show. He had me when he was 50, which I'm much more, now that I'm in my 50s, I'm much more appreciative to him that he did that. Because <laughs> there's no way I'm having a kid <laughs> in my 50s. But he did it. And then he took a lot of time with me and he taught me things. And from the old school, Milton Berle and George Burns and those great old time comedians that I used to hang out with, Joey Bishop, I would go backstage and bring Milton Berle his tea and Aww. talk to George Burns for hours and stuff like that. Sammy Davis Jr. even, the old school, the old guard showbiz. And then we came to Hollywood and I got to... I was introduced at 12 years old to the comedy store and the improvisation. Even before that, in New York City, those clubs were uh, comedy clubs started to take hold in the 70s. And my dad had been through so much in show business, he had seen it all. So he knew comedy was changing and he knew comedy clubs was the next big thing. And he taught me that before they even popped. So I was ready for that. Wow. You know, it's funny you threw out those names. And I think that the fact of the matter is, is we all like to hear and connect to things that remind us of time gone by. And, and I feel like, Mark, to be honest with you, that's why so many people look forward to seeing you in person, because quite frankly, we do connect to you on so many levels. Um, and, and from a time when laughter was, to me, the biggest part of a sitcom, I miss those days. So I hope folks turn out in big numbers for you on Thursday at the Zora shrine doors open at seven shows at eight again ticket prices are there on your screen and you can get your tickets now there are vip tickets available what does vip mean do they get to like get up close and personal or 
I'm not exactly sure, but I know that um, 100% of the merch sales will benefit the Michael J. Fox Foundation. So oh. I should mention that because we love to raise money for that fantastic foundation. I might not be here right now on TV with you if it wasn't for Michael J. Fox. I recognize that. I respect that. There's a way to make a donation online. Hey, listen, thank you so much, Mark. We do appreciate your time. We look forward to having you here in our great city. He'll be here Thursday night at the Zora Shrine. Mark, thank you so much. Wishing you nothing but the best. Enjoy the rest of your beautiful morning out there in uh, California. Yeah, for tickets to the show, they can go to madhattershows.com or they can go to ijoke.com, I-J-O-K-E.com. All the information is there. Thank you so much, Julie. Southern California, early oh. in the morning. There it is. Okay, as we go to break, there's Southern California, my friends. See it, look at it, enjoy it, and stay with us. We'll be right back.